Good morning and welcome to Worship with Christus Lutheran Church in Greenville, Wisconsin. Um, thank you for being with us this morning. We have heard that there might be some audio distortion going on, so we're trying to work on that as we speak. So hopefully um, you will be able to hear us a little better. I have a few announcements for us this morning. Um, first, a pastoral transition update. We um, have, or the church council has finalized the members of the ministry site profile committee. Those members are Tanya Arps, Lisa Borowski, Jennifer Christnock, Dee Dollum, Dick Dorn, Linda Mix, Patty Ruley, and Becky Seafelt. Our alternate is Maddie Curtin. So those are the people, if you remember, that will be helping to determine who we are as a church, where we hope to be going in the future, and that is the document that all pastors looking for a new call will explore and see if they think they are a good fit for Christus. Trunk or Treat is coming up next week. Um, next Sunday, October 24th, from 4 to 5.30 p.m. What we need are vehicles, people who want to come hand out candy. So don't worry, you don't need to have kids to do this. Any age can come and hand out candy from their vehicle. They can decorate their vehicle. It's not necessary, it just is more fun. But we also need participants who want to trick or treat around um, all those vehicles too. So let's make this a great fellowship event since we had to miss it last year. Let's really try to all pull together to make this a fun event for all. We are getting closer to Thanksgiving, which is kind of crazy, and it's time to dress the turkey. You have done this in the past where you have helped purchase a turkey for a family from the Hortonville Food Pantry. And so right now we are looking for donations of $20. $20 will purchase one turkey so they can have a Thanksgiving um, this year. All right, I think that is all the announcements I have for you. My name, oh, I didn't say who I am. I'm Christine Lapna. I'm the Director of Youth Ministry. I will be leading worship this morning along with Bruce Kessner, our music director. So let us begin our worship. Hear the call of the kingdom, lift your eyes to the king. Let his song rise within you as a fragrant offering of how God, rich in mercy, came in Christ to redeem all who trust is his unfailing grace. Hear the call of the kingdom to be children of light with the mercy of heaven the humility of Christ walking justly before him loving all that is right that the light of Christ may shine through us King of heaven we will answer the call we will follow bringing hope to the world filled with passion filled with power to proclaim salvation in Jesus' name. Through the call of the kingdom to reach out to the lost with the Father's compassion and the wonder of the cross, bringing peace and forgiveness and all hope yet to come. Let the nations put their trust in Him. King of heaven, we will answer the call. We will follow, bringing hope to the world. Filled with passion, filled with power to proclaim salvation in Jesus' name. 
King of Heaven. We will answer the call, we will follow, bringing hope to the world, filled with passion, filled with power to proclaim salvation in Jesus' name. Salvation in Jesus' name. Salvation in Jesus' name. The sound is better, they say. Oh. Bruce. I, I turned off the noise suppression. So much for having the noise suppression help. Yes, we tried to help eliminate that buzz you hear and made it worse. <laughs> I, I guess. guess so. All right, well, let's continue with our worship. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Almighty God, we have sought recognition and honor, fame and wealth, the successes of the world, over loving our neighbors and serving those in need around us. We would wa rather win the lottery and live comfortably than find new ways of sharing what we already have with the hungry and the homeless. We would rather live in safety and security than seek justice for the oppressed and marginalized. Forgive us for our selfishness and turn us to the needs of those around us. May we remember that we are all part of your body. We are all your children. May we remember that Jesus calls us to serve others and that instead of worldly recognition and riches, he went to the cross. May we seek forgiveness for our selfish ways at the same time forgiving ourselves for not being perfect and not being able to do it all. And may we strive simply to do what we can, to participate in your reign on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. You are loved and forgiven, renewed and restored by God. Go and do the same for others. Share mercy, forgiveness, and love. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the scripture readings. The first reading is from the 91st Psalm. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. No scrounge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Go back one. Yeah. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scrounge near come your tent. Well, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. I might have said that twice. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. A reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? 
And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This morning's gospel reading follows last week's lesson about the rich man and how it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And the rich man reading followed the lesson from the week before, Jesus' words about blessing the little children. The rich man and the children's stories immediately followed one another, but strangely jumped three verses to our story today, the request of James and John. Why did the lectionary choose to do this? I am not sure, but I think the omission of these verses was a big mistake. I think it helps us to understand more of what we are to hear and learn from today's lesson and how it plays a part in our lives. So I'm going to read those three verses to you right now. Verse 32, 33, and 34. Listen carefully. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him, and after for three days he will rise again. Did you hear it? Did you hear Jesus foretell his death to his disciples? Did you hear him describe the unbearable torture he would suffer? I know you did. I surely did. So how odd and ironic that James and John, two of his beloved disciples, would request something so strange of Jesus right after that. But before we get into that request, I think we need to go back a bit further in the Gospel of Mark to really learn and grasp the meaning of this passage. Much of Mark's Gospel has spoken about how we, as humans, will always be serving or someone or something. A fact we might recognize like a slap in the face or something more disguised. Jesus has been on his journey to Jerusalem, and the prediction of his death, which he tells his disciples, did not first happen in the missing verses that I just read. The missing verses I read is the third time Jesus made the prediction to his disciples. In chapter 8, Jesus foretold for the first time in Mark his death and resurrection. But Peter did not get it. He did not understand and disagreed with Jesus and rebuked him. In chapter 9, Jesus told the disciples again that he was going to be betrayed into human hands, killed, and three days later, he was to rise again. 
And the disciples still did not understand and were silent. And then the disciples argued amongst themselves about who would be the greatest. Seriously, disciples? So to help the disciples understand, Jesus brings a child to them and tells them that true greatness comes about when welcoming the vulnerable, like this child. And then we get to chapter 10, where the scripture lesson for today comes from. And there is the third prediction, the verses that were left out, the verses I just read to you. And now we hear James and John's request. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. I imagine Jesus looking at them and saying, what you talking about, Willis? I don't know, does it? <laughs> that's kind of an old reference. Millennials will not get that. Can you imagine Jesus' face right now? Gosh, that man was patient. Jesus responds, what is it you want me to do? And James and John say, grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Glory? Do you two men understand what you're asking right now? Yes, James and John, very soon there will be someone on Jesus' right and on Jesus' left. Two thieves crucified on crosses. James and John, are you sure this is your idea of glory? And Jesus responds by telling James and John they do not know what they're asking. He then asks them, are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? Jesus does not want this cup right now, the cup of sour wine he receives on the cross. James, John, are you sure? And James and John respond, we are able. What? The rest of the disciples heard this and got mad. Why? Well, maybe because they did not think of it first to ask Jesus. Or because they think James and John will get a better place by Jesus. We, as the readers of the, this gospel, we full out can see the irony of all of this, as we not only know all that came before, but we all know what will come. When I say the word power, what do you think of in light of today, 2021? Do you think about leadership, control, status? Jesus says, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. Jesus is stating that following him involves service. We can either serve others and follow Jesus' mission to serve, or we can secure what will come for us through power, wealth, possessions, our youthfulness. But Christus, friends, we all know this. We've heard this before over and over about what a life of a disciple is. The life of a follower of Jesus is all about. And even though we know it, we, my friends, we are human. We fall short at times. We get tempted over and over. We put our confidence in what we can do right now. And even sometimes, we do not take care of our neighbors, but take care of only ourselves. And even though we do some of this over and over, Jesus keeps coming to us. Even when we do not do a good job of embodying what being a servant is all about just as he did to James and John. He kept showing up, and he keeps loving us. Thank goodness for that. We know this stuff. We have heard it preached in the church forever. Jesus showed us how to live. He lived it to his death on the cross. Jesus closes this reading by saying, 
for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Maybe Jesus' term of ransom here means he's trying to ransom all of us from a life that we think we want, a life where past power and status drowns us. We live in a world where we constantly measure ourselves against others just like James and John were doing. I thought of my call story when I was studying the scripture for this sermon, a time when I did not want to go against what the world had taught me at that time about what success was, what power was, something that I felt was ingrained in me. I apologize to those who have heard my call to ministry story before but I feel it is relevant to the text today. So it was 1995. I had almost been out of college for a year. I had spent my college years pursuing psychology in the hopes of getting my master's degree and doctorate in child psychiatry when my world turned upside down. I had graduated college and moved home to Appleton. I was applying to grad schools but I needed a job. My home church asked me if I wanted to work as their part-time youth director with the high school youth. I agreed. In spring of 1995, I started getting acceptance letters from universities, but was not as excited to be accepted to pursuing my life dream as I thought. My pastor at the time tried to show me that there was not much success in the counseling psychiatry field at the time. He told me lots of people in that profession he knew could not even keep full-time hours. He told me how he would make the youth director position full-time so I could make a living. But it just did not seem right. I was measuring what success was. I was focusing on what I had learned while in college. What would my college classmates in psychology think if I did not follow my college degree? What would the world think? I remembered what my college advisor told me about how, how I would be nothing in life with just a bachelor's in psychology. I had to go on to grad school. If I did not pursue that route, I would be nothing. I went and visited that college advisor and told him that I was really, really confused and really, really stressed out about what I should do with my life. I needed him to give me some advice. I told him I felt this strange call to ministry, to work in a church, to work with youth, to give up the path I had followed the path ingrained in my mind of what would give me status and power in the world. He told me it would be ridiculous if I left the world of psychology. That did not help my decision to answer this call at all. It turmoiled me more. I talked to my parents about doing something different than my college dreams, and I remember my conversation I had with my dad the most. I remember him trying to convince me to continue to pursue my dream of being a child psychiatrist. And what I remember him saying is, and sorry dad, that there is no money in the church. That a life of psychiatry would help me achieve a much higher financial status than working in a church. Well, there is some truth in that compare the salary of a youth director and a salary of a psychiatrist? Well, after months and months of anxiety and stress, well, you all know the end to the story, right? I gave up all that I knew and followed God's call to youth ministry. And I would not change it one bit. The rewards are so much more satisfying than any amount of money. My life really did not turn upside down, but right side up in true Jesus style. 
just like he did for James and John in our reading today. Jesus continues to give us a different kind of lesson about what we think power is. Even when James and John kept at him, misunderstood him, and even when we flee and question, Jesus keeps coming. He did then, and he does now. My story of becoming a servant is definitely going to be different than your stories. Not everyone's story is about a call to ministry in the church. Maybe your call is to look around, take a look around you in your life, and look at what is in front of you, and look at the gifts God has given you, and take those gifts and use them. Stop measuring yourself in terms of others. Find freedom in not measuring at all. Do what Jesus did. Love and service is really what it is all about. Power, wealth, status do not matter to Jesus. What matters is to lose yourself in service. That is our freedom as children of God. When we lose ourselves in service, whatever form that takes for you, we find ourselves and we live more fully than ever before. Who will you serve? Amen. Jesus, use me, take this life of mine and use me, use me, Jesus, use me, keep me by your side and use me, all I want is to be with you. To ever please you in all I do Teach me, Father, to learn your ways And walk with me each day Use me, Jesus, use me Take this life of mine and use me Use me, Jesus, use me. Keep me by your side and use me. Mold me, make me what you would have me be. I only want to serve you faithfully. Help me, Father, to truly see. You have for me. Use me, Jesus, use me. Take this life of mine and use me. Use me, Jesus, use me. Keep me by your side and use me. Lord Jesus, keep me by your side and use me. Lord Jesus, keep me by your side and use me. Let us now give our expression to our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now continue with our authoring and anthem. Thank you for your continued support of Christus, the ministry here, the work that we do. So thank you. If you want to be first, then be a slave of all. That sounds like the worst to be a slave of all. But in Christ's eyes, that is the best. So if you want to be greater than all the rest, be a slave of all. Hear the words of Jesus called to be a slave of all. If you want to be top, then be a slave of all, and don't ever stop being a slave of all. For in Christ's eyes, it's best to serve, so if you want to be greatest, this rule observe. Be a slave of all, hear the words of Jesus called, be a slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. These are the words that Jesus did say, and our Savior has shown us the way to this, and you will then see. If you want to be great, then be a slave of all. So go celebrate and be a slave of all. Yes, in Christ's eyes, the number one will be a generous servant, just like God's son. Be a slave of all. Hear the words of Jesus called, be a slave of all. Thank you, Bruce. Let's, let's continue with the prayers of the people. Dear God, Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures we praise you provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl reptiles wild horses dolphins and all living things flourish as you intend suffering one for all who work towards peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart we praise you Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, 
poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, addiction, cancer, diabetes, dementia, COVID, or any illness. Especially we pray for this morning, Chad and Jen, Al and Lindsay, Al and Mary Kay, Sandy and Bob, Kevin and Sue, Anna, Eric, Lexi, Karina, Dawn, Chris, Helen, Helen and Kathy, Kristen, Joanne, Mark and Lynn, Dolores and Angie, Church Council, the Profile and Call Committees, Mandy, Trey, Nathan, Sam, Grandpa Lee, Audrey, Pete and Nancy, Ward and Beth, Luis and his family, Phyllis and Chuck, Verna, Trina, Jack, and Walt. May all be healed, O Lord. Sustaining one, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, counters, community and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Please join me now in praying the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We are called to be God's people, shown by our lives His grace. One in heart and one in spirit, sign of hope for all the race. Let us show how He has changed us and remade us as His own. Let us share our lives together as we shall around His throne. We are called to be God's servants working in His world today, taking His own task upon us, all His secret words obey. Let us rise then to His summons, dedicate to Him our all, that we may be faithful servants, quick to answer now His call. We are called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right, standing firm for godly justice, bringing evil things to light. Let us seek the courage needed by calling to fulfill that 
the wild bane all the blessing of the true way of God's Thanks be to God. God.